Hi again, it's me Maysoon. I'm sorry for the delay for today. Uh, I had a problem with the audio. Apparently I have to put the headset on. So hopefully my voice now is clear. I've been away for a couple of months. I uh, live in Houston, as I said. Um, I just moved into a new apartment. I just got a new job. So um, I'm going to be posting my schedule. So you're going to have to see my off days where I'm going to be putting two lectures a week. And for people who's having um, an NCLEX in less than two weeks, I might help them. You can email me, um, you can message me, and maybe we might Skype or anything that can help you. Remember, um, I'm not giving you contents, so you have, you're have you supposed to know your contents. I'm just trying to summarize your context or to simplify it and to know how to apply them in NCLEX because it is not a direct question. So for today, I'm going to discuss three topics, which is an easy, wheezy topics. It's always an NCLEX, and not every time we time, not every time we take the right answer, because it is tricky, as I said before. So uh, the first one I'm going to go to is diabetes, and there is a lot of contents about diabetes. You can read about that. I'm just going to give you what do you need to know to pass NCLEX in diabetes. And if you watch my previous videos, something to help you how to study on is to turn your NCLEX to semi-open book exam. And I talked about it earlier, how to simplify your notes and how to connect the dots and to search for other walk-ups of every single disease, okay? Let's go diabetes number one. First of all, diabetes, we have two types. We have type one and type two. What do you need to know for NCLEX? So first of all is diabetes is whenever you have a problem with your pancreas. The type one, it's when your pancreas is not functioning at all. So it's not working at all. Do you have insulin? Of course not. Do you need insulin? Yes. So no, it doesn't matter how much you eat. It doesn't matter if you eat chocolate or not. It doesn't matter if you eat a lot or not because in both way, you're still gonna need insulin. Of course, it's going to be different if you eat a lot, you're going to need high dose of insulin. If you eat less, you're going to need no, I mean low dose, but you always need insulin. However, in type 2, your pancreas is functioning, but is it producing enough insulin to digest whatever you ate? No. So do you need insulin? No. You might just need tablets to enhance it more. So probably here, you might go well without any medicine. And type one, the symptoms, of course, you know, the initial symptoms, which is the sweating, um, um, increased urination. I'm not going to talk about that at all. Okay. I'm talking about what you need to know for NCLEX. So here you must know diabetes number one will lead to ketones and to DKA, which is having the better keto acidosis. Because your pancreas is not functioning at all, it's not producing insulin. That's step one. So no matter how much you eat, if you're not taking insulin, that food will never be digested. Thus, we will never have energy to do the daily activity of life, to walk, to talk, to move. And every single cell in our organ needs some energy. So whenever that energy is not being provided because there's no insulin, so the food is not digested, the cells of our body will break down themselves to produce some energy. And whenever the cells of our body break down themselves, it produces ketones. So that's why we have ketones in diabetic type 1. Let's go to type 2. In type 2, the pancreas is functioning. Is it functioning enough? No, but it's still functioning. So what's going to happen in type 2? So... It is going to function a little bit, right? So you're still going to have energy. Is that energy enough? No, it's not. That's why we need the tablets. But you still have some little bit energy. So you have a little bit energy that your cells doesn't have to break down themselves to have energy. That's why you won't have ketones. But here, you have no energy at all. So it's going to break down the cells themselves. That's why you're going to have ketones. Over here, it's not. Okay? 
And so that was just hyperglycemia, HHNK, where here you're going to see diabetic ketoacidosis. So you're going to smell them, smells like ketones, even in the urine, you're going to see ketones. Let's go for the treatment and as we talk about it. So in diabetes number one, you didn't have insulin. So one of the lines is insulin. So how I memorize it is the word die, because unless you don't have this, unless you don't treat it, you're going to die. So D stands for diet, I stands for insulin, and E is for exercise. What is your first line of treatment? Because that's what they're going to ask in NCLEX. Your first line of treatment is insulin because your pancreas is not working. So you really need the insulin. Even if I change your diet, you're still going to need those insulin. What is the best line of treatment is, again, insulin because even if i change your diet the best thing is the insulin because your pancreas is not working so this is probably the one question that even if i change first or best it is the same answer is insulin let's go diabetes number two so the pancreas is producing insulin it's not that enough but it's producing it so what is the first line of treatment for dm2 it's diet what is the best line of treatment? It's the tablets, right? But the first thing we have to try is the diet. Let's talk about the diet in more details. You have to give that patient at least six meals a day. Why six meals a day? Every time we have a meal or we ingest a meal, you're going to tell the pancreas, hey, wake up, start working, and produce me that little insulin that you can produce. If I eat one meal a day, of course, it's going to be high calorie, whatever. It's going to work one time and then it's going to go troop, down again. Every time we try to let it wake up, it's going to be hard. It's hard for you to wake up. So one of the tricks is to keep it working, to keep that insulin in the blood. So if we have six meals a day, every time it's still working. So six times every day, it will continue working. So every four hours it's working. Every four hours, it's working. So their practice is working all the time. Low calorie diet, because if we have low calorie diet, we don't need that much insulin. And at the first place, the pancreas in diabetes number two is not functioning that well. It's functioning low. So if we're giving them a low workload, probably we don't need a lot of um, other treatment. Okay. So in the diet itself, what is the first line of treatment in the diet for diabetes number two. So we're talking about the diet. It's breaking down the meals into six meals. So if he's taking that steak, for instance, instead of taking it one time, there's a lot of workload in for that pancreas, poor pancreas, breaking it down to six meals. So that one steak, cut it into six portion and then eat it throughout the day. So you're not giving all the tasks at one time for that pancreas, but you're breaking it down so he can actually digest it. Okay, so those are the most important things for DM1, DM2. The first, the best, the diet, the treatment, and when it is ketones, when it's not, and the reason behind it all. Let's go to this one, diabetes insipidus. The reason why I put it in here, a lot of people get confused between the two because they always think it's diabetes. And if you go through your... Um, questionnaires, whether if you buy any app or any reviews you, you're going to buy. Any questions of the DI or diabetes insipidus, one of the option is actually related to the, the regular diabetes. Because if you read it so fast, your brain going to think it's diabetes and you're going to automatically choose that option. So they want to see, they're going to try to trick you if you're really reading it so well or not. So diabetes insipidus, it's not at all diabetes. So the pancreas is working in here, okay? So in my brain, in my book up, diabetes insipidus, D-I, it stands for D-I, which is the first two letters of diuresis. So that helps me more. So diuresis, it means you're losing all of the fluid. All of the fluid is going out of the system. So you're having dehydration. So whenever you have dehydration, all of the fluid is going out and can have increased urine output. Now, probably all of the things you know, 
The things that I need you to know for NCLEX is the following. The specific gravity, the sodium, and the HCT, because that's what they're going to ask you. You have a patient, diabetes insipidus, what do you expect the lab diagnostic is? Or you have a patient with diabetes insipidus, his uh, sodium is 130. Is he having complication? Is he getting worse? Is he getting treatment? Is the method of treatment is working? So those are the tricky questions that they're going to ask you. So first of all, we have to know the relation or how can we specify if we have high sodium or low sodium or what does that even mean? So let's pretend this white box is your body. <coughs> and the blue in it is the fluid. So the regular fluid have to be in the middle. So if you have high, you have overload. If you have low, you have dehydration, okay? And in diabetes, in the diabetes insipidus, you have dehydration, right? Because all of the fluid is going out here, right? So we have low. First of all, if it's high fluid, the sodium and the HCT are just component or just like salt. It never changes in the um, numbers. But the ratio comparing to the fluid, that would change it. So if you have more fluid and same amount of sodium and HCT, but comparing it to the fluid, it's going to be low because a lot of fluid. If you're going to decrease the fluid, but same amount of sodium and HCT, but in the labs, it's going to show it's high because the concentration of it swimming in that low fluid is high. So that's actually what we are doing it. So in diabetes insipidus, because we have low fluid, because everything is going out, what do you expect between the sodium and the HCT? It will be high because of the ratio. And then all the fluid will go out. What do you expect from the specific gravity? It will be low because the fluid is high. Okay? Same concept. Something the opposite, we call it SIDH. In SIDH, in my brain, my brain, it's sudden S, I increase ADH. So sudden increase in ADH. ADH in my brain is a vacuum. It holds every single fluid, every water. So it's the opposite of the TI. So what's going to happen with the sodium, ACT, and specific gravity? So what's going to happen with the fluid inside the body? It's a lot. So the ratio between it and the sodium and the HCT is low because there's, there's a lot of room they can swim in, so it's low. So we have low sodium and low HCT. And because everything is whole inside the body, how about the urine output? Will it going to be a lot of urine output or low? It's going to be low. So the ratio and the concentration of the specific gravity comparing to the fluid they have to swim, pour them, they don't have much space, it's going to be high. So I'm going to give you one example of the questions that you might encounter with SIDH or DI. So you have a patient uh, diagnosed with SIDH, and the lab diagnostic is 141. Is it getting worse? Is the method of treatment is uh, okay, or is it working, or is he getting complication, or is he dehydrated, or does he need more fluids. So what do we expect with the SIDH? Low, right? 141 is within normal. It means he's getting his treatment, right? Let's go with a DI. You have patients um, having DI and then his sodium level is 130. So first of all, we said the sodium is 135 to 145. And we said in the DI, because they're losing fluid, we expect the sodium to be high. So we expect to be more than 145, am I right? And we just said that he is 130. It means he was getting treatment. So he was getting fluids. <coughs> so he was getting treatment. So the sodium was going down. But it went down too much. So it means that we gave him over treatment. So we overloaded him with fluids. Because whenever we give him fluids, it's not just fluid we're giving him, but also there's sodium in it, sodium chloride, whether it's um, hyper or hypo, but we're still giving him sodium, okay? But if we give him a lot of fluids, 
So he, it, and it went down to 130. So we over treated him. Poor patient. So we need to stop the fluids long time ago. So that's how NCLEX will try to test you. It will not give you the direct questions. It will see if you can connect the dots. If you know that this is the normal range or expected range for diabetes insipidus and we give you this level, do you think they're getting the treatment right or wrong? So hopefully this is uh, will help you more in your NCLEX notes. And if you have any other questions related to this, message me or any other things, message me and let me know. And see you in the next lecture. Have a good day.